Garrison Creek runs from North Rutherford Boulevard down Las Casas Pike to Bushman Creek. It's on the state's list for impaired streams for sediment and lack of streamside vegetative cover. Work on the stream continues, and on this day, a group of kids from McFadden were there to help out. We've got a couple of things going on today. We've got a great group coming out from McFadden Community Center. We've been working on this stream since 2012, planting trees, and we're going to be sampling the tree species that are here to try to determine how many different types of trees we've got. We start walking down through here. All right, you guys see any more trees we want to get? Because of the leaves. We're going to head back now. And we're going to be doing a little bit of trash cleanup. Just look at the ground in front of you, see if you see any more trash. Because we don't want it to be in the water. There's a little bit of trash up in here, guys. And possibly doing a little bit of invasive removal. You know, back in 1998 or 99, I was teaching down at MTSU, and I would drive by this stream every day. The city at the time was mowing it. They referred to it as Big Ditch. I didn't like that. I knew it was a river, a stream that flows into Bushman Creek and ultimately into the Stones River, which is our drinking water supply. About 2012, which was my 50th birthday, we actually planted about 2,500 trees here. But one of the things the algae has to have is sunlight. Well, it's not getting any sunlight anymore because the stream is shaded. It's now much cooler. You know, one of the things that we've seen as a result of this restoration project is that substrate has changed drastically in the stream. And a part of that's because the channel has begun to meander within the larger channel of Garrison Creek here. You can see that there are some rocks and things down in there. There's a lot of aquatic vegetation. That's watercress. So that is creating habitat for aquatic insects. And those aquatic insects, which we also like to call fish food, creek critters, those are the beginnings of the food chain in the system. So you can't have fish if you don't have fish food. It's real important to have a diversity in your forest. And that's because if a disease comes, like Dutch elm disease uh, or the emerald ash borer, and you only have one type of tree, you could lose the whole forest. But if you have a diversity of trees, you have a much better chance of having that forest survive. You know, the other thing about having trees on a creek bank is that those tree roots are to that creek bank like rebar is to concrete. It holds it in place, but that's not all. The other thing that those trees do is they poke holes. When the trees start absorbing that water, this area literally works like a sponge. Not only are they reducing flooding, but they're also reducing pollution. They're filtering out pollutants that are in that water. And that's good for everybody because clean water is much cheaper to filter into drinking water than polluted water is.